let's take a brief look at an introduction to the chi-square distribution. This is the Greek letter chi, and we call this the chi-square distribution. The chi-square distribution is a continuous probability distribution that is widely used in statistical inference. It comes up frequently in practice and in a wide variety of situations. Like some other continuous probability distributions, the chi-square distribution is related to the standard normal distribution. If a random variable z has the standard normal distribution, then z squared is a random variable that has the chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom. Let's take a look at a couple of plots. Here's the standard normal distribution. If z has this distribution, and we square z, then z squared has this distribution, which is a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom. The relationship between the standard normal distribution and the chi-square distribution goes further than this. If z1 through zk are independent standard normal random variables, then if we square them all and add them, their sum has a chi-square distribution with k degrees of freedom. Note that the degrees of freedom are the number of independent squared standard normal random variables that we are adding up. Here's the probability density function of the chi-square distribution with k degrees of freedom. This is the gamma function, and I'll let you look that up if you need to know something about that. Note that a random variable with a chi-square distribution can only take on non-negative values, which makes sense since we're squaring standard normal random variables and adding them up. Here k, the degrees of freedom, is usually a positive whole number in practice, but in this PDF there's nothing stopping it from being a non-integer value. The mean of a chi-square distribution is equal to its degrees of freedom, equal to k. And the variance of a chi-square distribution is equal to double the degrees of freedom, or 2k. Let's see what this PDF looks like in a plot. I'm going to split this up and look at one plot where the degrees of freedom are 1 and 2, and a different plot for larger degrees of freedom because the shape is a little bit different in those situations. Here the white curve is a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom, and the green curve is a chi-square distribution with two degrees of freedom. Note that the minimum value a chi-square random variable can take on is zero, and it can take on any non-negative value. I've truncated the plot here at six, but the values do go off to infinity. For 1 and 2 degrees of freedom, the PDF is greatest at 0. In fact, for 1 degree of freedom, the white curve, we can't really plot it as the PDF shoots off to infinity at 0, so I've truncated it here just before 0. The shape is a little bit different as the degrees of freedom get a little bigger, so let's have a look at that. Here I've plotted in three chi-square distributions. The white curve is a chi-square distribution with 3 degrees of freedom, the red curve a chi-square distribution with 6 degrees of freedom, and the green curve a chi-square distribution with 12 degrees of freedom. When the degrees of freedom are 3 or more, the PDF starts at 0, increases to a max, and then decreases. We can see here that there is strong right skewness when the degrees of freedom are small, like in the white curve, we have this right skewness. But as the degrees of freedom increase, the skewness decreases, and the distribution gets more and more symmetric. In fact, as the degrees of freedom increase, the chi-square distribution looks more and more like a normal distribution. The mean is equal to the degrees of freedom, so in the white curve, which has 3 degrees of freedom, the mean is 3. But for the green curve, with 12 degrees of freedom, the mean is 12. The variance is double the degrees of freedom, so the white curve would have a variance of 6, and the green curve would have a variance of 24. And the mode of the distribution occurs at the degrees of freedom minus 2, as long as the degrees of freedom are at least 2. So the highest peak of this green distribution, with 12 degrees of freedom, occurs right here at 12 minus 2, or 10.
In practical problems in probability and statistics, we need to find areas under the curve and percentiles of this distribution. Both of those cases involve integrating the probability density function. For the chi-square distribution, there isn't a general closed form solution for that, and the probability density function must be integrated numerically. So we will find areas and percentiles for the chi-square distribution using software or a chi-square table.